Hello YouTubers and fellow hams. Sorry about the extremely odd and dramatic lighting here. Uh, it is 3.30 in the morning. My uh, wake-up time during this heat wave is about 3 in the morning where it's still a reasonable temperature and I can get some work done. Uh, unfortunately, I don't have any sunlight coming in the windows, so I've just got the uh, usual studio, well not studio lights, <laughs> the RV lights and uh, one little handheld light that I'm uh, putting some extra light on my face with, but it's just, I don't know, the camera doesn't want to expose right. Anyway, um, part three in the True SDX uh, is the power cord. Now, the, uh, well, I'll just, let me just go to the bench here and I'll show you what I'm dealing with trying to get Anderson power poles onto this little radio. Okay, so this is the problem I'm trying to solve. This is the power cord that came with the True SDX. And it's very, very fine gauge wire here. Uh, I don't know the exact gauge, 18 or 20, something like that. It's really tiny, uh, not very strong. And I have put an Anderson power poles connector on here because that's what I'm gonna be using going forward for all of my rig connections. So this is, I'm not gonna stress it too much. I mean, it's, it's, <laughs> yeah. This wouldn't last in the field um, if this got crunched up against here, pulled on, twisted. Um, eventually those wires, those fine little wires, are going to break. So what I want to make, and I've looked all over Thingiverse and I can't find exactly the right thing, but I'm going to make a shell that's going to go over this and it's going to clamp down on this wire at the back to, be, to provide strain relief. And the Anderson power poles are going to fit perfectly in the shell, nice and tight, so you'll have this nice shell to grip and plug in and unplug with and you'll never have to pull on the wire and the wire will be strain relieved. So I need to design that first. Uh, I'm going to go start drawing and uh, come up with the, uh, the design and then we're going to hop into Tinkercad which I still love to use for simple quick projects because it's so easy and we're going to design the shell. Okay, to make my power sh the power poles shell I'm going to use a model that I designed a few years ago for another video. And that's this right here. Now what this is, is this uh, object is the dimensions of the power poles up to where the nib is and just a little bit further. Um, and what this is is a punch, what I call a punch. It's, a, it's an object that I can use to make a hole, for example, in, uh, in this piece here, this little segment of wall, I used it to cut out a hole and you can see the nubs in there. And the uh, power poles snap right into that and hold quite firmly. So this would be um, a punch you could use to make a wall, a hole in the wall of a case to allow you to snap in Anderson power poles. But what I'm going to do is, uh, let's get rid of that, I'm going to use this punch to make the hole in my shell. Now I have already drawn out on paper and figured out the dimensions, so what I want to start with is I'm going to uh, take and make a cube Get rid of the tool tip here. And I'm going to make it, um, well, let's see, the height dimension on the power poles. Okay, so I need a height dimension of 8.5. The power poles are 8.5. I need to make a note of that for the rest of my thinking. Where's my pen? All right. So... My punch is 8.4. Yeah, okay, so it's already the right height. Um, all right, so uh, this is going to be half of the shell. Uh, so i got to figure the height. I want um, 2 millimeters extra space above and below the connector for the top of the shell. So that's 4. So that would be uh, 8, probably 12 12.4, right? Okay, so we'll take the height and we'll make it uh, 12.4. And I know I want the length of it to be 30. I've already figured that out. And the width of it needs to be the width of the 
punch plus, and I want three millimeters on the sides, so that's 16.2 plus six would be 12.2. So we'll take this and we'll make this 12.2. That's not right. No, that would be 20, <laughs> 22.2. Come on, brain. I know it's early. I got to do my work early. All right. Now, um, I wanted uh, two millimeters above and below, so I'm going to raise this off the deck. One, two millimeters. All right. Then I'm going to put this here. And we're going to select both of these and we're going to do some aligning mirror align all right got them all selected align it's centered this way and it's centered this way and i think i've got it aligned to the edge let me double check that um Yes, we're aligned to the edge. Okay, that's exactly what I want. Oh, I figured this was going to be half. All right, so this is our dimension. We want half of that. So that would be uh, 6.2. Boom. Okay, so there's half of the shell. Now... This punch is actually longer than the power poles. Um, I've got about 15 extra millimeters here that's going to be a pocket for the wires. And speaking of that, now I need two more things. I need a screw hole um, to put in my screw. So I'm going to take a cylinder as a hole. And I want it to be four millimeters. That's about the right size for the threads on the screw that I'm using to fit in there. So we're going to take this and we're going to put it in here. Right about there. Yeah, that's good. And I am going to leave it centered. So we'll leave that there. Now I need another cylinder as a whole. And this is going to be for my uh, power cable to come in. And I have already figured that that is three millimeters. I also need to rotate it 90 degrees. So we'll hit this and we'll, well, wait, first we got to set its dimensions. All right, so we want it to be three millimeters, three millimeters. All right. And now I can rotate it 90 degrees. 90. And we'll bring it over. Now let's see, this is 6.2 high. All right, so I need this to be halfway into the block. And this is three millimeters, so 1.5 millimeters down from the surface of the block, right? And that is 6.2 minus 1.5 would be uh, 4.7. So I'm going to take this and make it 4.7 off the deck. All right. Now, all I need to do is move it into here, like so. And that is going to be the channel for the wire to come in. Ooh, I have a problem. Symmetry. Yeah, okay. I think what I'm going to have to do is use two screws. So I'm going to take this guy... Put it two millimeters in from the edge. I'll take this hole along with, well, I can't do that until I group it. Hmm. 
nine. Yeah, that should be right. And now this guy I need to duplicate and take it in one, two from the side. All right, that should be my block. Let's group it all together and see what it looks like. Boom, okay, that will be my shell. The power poles will sit in this hole. There'll be a little bit of a pocket for the wires. There'll be the strain relief for the uh, uh, power cord coming in and two holes for the screws that'll clamp it shut. Okay, I did a little bit more cleanup um, just to, to make things a little bit nicer. You can see I flared the outside of this hole a little bit, which should help save the cable from being eaten up right here. And uh, just for appearances, I round, I shaved off these corners a little bit just to make it a little cleaner. But I think this is the final version of the shell. I think this will work. We'll have strain relief for the wire, a little pocket here where the wires can sit going into the connector. The connector itself should be held by the shell. Um, yeah, I think this is going to work. All right, time to print it. Alrighty, we're printed and ready. Um, pardon the 3D printer running in the background. Kind of crunched for time. So, these are the finished shells. Now, these screw holes are um, just small enough for the threads of this, uh, I think it's a 5 30 seconds, 6 30 seconds thread screw to bite into. But I don't want them to bite in on the other half. I want them, that to be smooth. So I'm going to take a drill and a drill bit and I'm just going to open those holes slightly. There. So now my screws should just slide through these holes. Yeah. Alright. Okay. Let's put it together. Now the shell has the little nubs right there at the end. To line up with the uh, dimples on the Anderson power poles. So we'll line those dimples up with the nubs and it should just snap right in, which it does. Perfect. Now you can see we've got a little pocket here for the wires to sit in. So I'm going to make sure they're tucked in there, like so. And then we'll put the top part on. There. Look at that. power poles can move just slightly in there but they're pretty much firmly held in place and this is clamping down on the cord for strain relief and all I got to do is just screw it together ta-da there we are my true SDX power cord, Anderson power poles, strain relieved. Not going to be putting much strain on this cable. See that? So, this is for my power brick. This is to the true SDX. And I can just look at that. Ta da! And when I'm done, ta da! Alright, so. That seems to work just fine. Um, there's one little thing though. The notches on the side of the power poles, those tiny little bitty dimples where you would normally put the little metal pin in to keep them from not sliding apart. Um, that's what's holding the power poles in the shell and that's not a lot of grip. Uh, it is possible if they're really stuck together when you've got them plugged together and you're trying to unplug them to pull the power poles out of the shell. So, I'm looking at the shell, seeing if there's a way I can do something internally to get a better grip on the power poles. Um, you can't do too fine a detail on these 3D printed parts, so I can't do little uh, 
uh, rails that they would slide into like they slide into each other. The plastic just wouldn't be strong enough. So I'm looking for other options there. There might be a revision 3 coming uh, soon. If so, there'll be a supplementary video, just a short video announcing it. I'm um, looking at ways of uh, changing the inside of the shell to maybe get a slightly better grip on the power poles. You might think about glue. Um, I might think about glue. Um, dab or two of super glue inside just to, to get a good grip on them. Um, or uh, squeeze in on the sides, the, the narrow sides, when you uh, go to plug and unplug so you're squeezing in against those little uh, notches on the side of the power poles to get a better grip. So that's the only, uh, the only issue with them right now is that that little notch doesn't give a very good grip and it is possible to pull them out of the uh, shell. So, <sighs> yeah, well, it is what it is. It's at least usable. So I put it up on Thingiverse. Um, there are two versions of the model up there. Uh, one with the three millimeter hole at the back for the, the tiny power cord for the true SDX and one with a four millimeter hole at the back for a slightly larger power cord like the uh, twin lead power cord that comes with a uh, Yaesu FT817. Um, and you could of course pull the, uh, the STL file into your own modeler and change those hole dimensions to suit you. Uh, all right, well, that's the uh, 3D printed shell for the Anderson power poles for small power cables. Hope you found that useful, uh, and uh, we'll see you in the next video. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed the video, don't forget to give it a thumbs up. Also, if you're not already a subscriber, click to subscribe. Join us on the Facebook channel for discussion about the videos. And if you'd like to help support this channel, please click to support me on my Patreon page.